Did you know that most of the people live in the victim state of being? They constantly complain, blame, try to control things, and are in a constant state of stress and anxiety. In order to create a better, happier, and more exciting life, they need to exit that state and enter the state of creation. If you want to learn how to stop being a victim, then this video is for you. Experiencing tough situations in life means that certain events or conditions are making you feel a certain way, affecting your thoughts and emotions. This, in turn, keeps you in the same state of being, leading to a consistent life pattern. If you ask someone why they're unhappy or frustrated, they might blame external factors for making them feel a certain way. Essentially, feeling and thinking in ways we believe we can't control makes us victims of those circumstances. As humans, we often become victims of the conditions in our lives where the environment controls our feelings and thoughts. The key idea here is that if you can change your thoughts and emotions, you might be able to bring about positive changes in your life. Instead of seeing yourself as a victim, you could become the creator of your life by thinking differently and feeling differently in challenging situations. Our goal is to guide people in reversing this process. Every person, circumstance, or object in your life is neurologically mapped in your brain, creating a record of your past experiences. Memories shape your emotions, and your responses to familiar situations are stored in your brain. Many people let their environment control their thoughts and emotions, but our interest lies in exploring if changing your thinking, actions, and emotions can lead to positive transformations in your life. Your brain is like a time capsule of your past, shaped and molded by everything you've learned and experienced. From a scientific viewpoint, learning happens when brain cells, neurons, join together to create thousands of connections. These connections then form complex networks, like a three-dimensional map inside your head. Imagine learning as giving your brain an upgrade. When you pay attention to information that makes sense to you, it leaves biological imprints in your brain. Experiencing something new gets your senses to write a story in your brain, creating even more connections and enhancing your brain's circuitry. Not only do experiences upgrade your brain, but they also generate emotions. Emotions are like the chemical residue from past experiences, creating a lasting impact. The more emotional an event, the stronger its imprint on your brain, forming long-term memories. So, learning is about creating new connections, and memories are maintaining those connections. When you repeat thoughts, behaviors, or emotions, the neurons in your brain fire and wire together, creating long-term relationships. Your senses connect you to the outside world, and every highly emotional event gets engraved as a memory in your brain. These memories are associated with specific people, things, or places, shaping your perceptions of the world. Essentially, the past lives in your brain and body. Many people, as a routine, reach for their phones to connect to the known world. This can be a habit that keeps us tied to the past, as everything and everyone is neurologically mapped in our brains. By understanding this process, we can become more aware of how our responses and feelings are influenced and take steps to break free from routine thinking. Now, the environment seems to be taking charge of how a person thinks and feels. Anything controlling our thoughts and emotions makes us victims, as if something is programming us to react in specific ways. Checking your messages is a common morning routine, but what if, as soon as you wake up, you program a new behavior or rehearse a different way of interacting with others? In the game of personal evolution, it's about being conscious of how you respond to situations throughout the day. Can you choose to think differently and feel consciously, even in challenging moments? The goal is to be aware of unconscious thoughts, avoiding habitual reactions and practicing positive emotions. This mental shift happens even before checking your phone. Many people wake up and immediately think about their problems, 
which are essentially memories etched in the brain. When thoughts turn negative, the body gets stuck in the past. If you believe thoughts shape your destiny and emotions tie you to the past, your life remains the same. The challenge lies in thinking beyond your current feelings. If you can't rise above your emotions and recognize that your thoughts influence your destiny, you're essentially living in the past and your life won't change. Predictability offers no room for the unknown, yet the unknown is what brings excitement and unexpected opportunities. Consider how much space you have for unpredictability in your routine. By breaking the pattern of repetitive thoughts, choices, and habits, you open the door to the unknown. Repeating the same thoughts and experiences reinforces established neural pathways, creating a familiar feeling. To truly evolve, break the cycle and embrace the uncertainty of the unknown, allowing for unexpected and exciting possibilities to unfold. If you can figure out how you'll feel in any situation, you're still sticking to the familiar. For example, just thinking about a meeting with the same team you've worked with for years can make you anticipate the exact feeling you've had in similar situations before. When you can predict how you'll feel in the future because of past experiences, you're likely to create more of the same. That's because you're essentially staying the same. Now, if you're on autopilot and can't predict how you'll feel in various life situations, you might hesitate to engage with them. Think of emotions like the energy we emit. When someone is strongly emotional, their energy is palpable, affecting the room. We've all sensed someone's energy when they were angry, frustrated, or even calm and loving. Different emotions carry different frequencies. Positive emotions like love and joy have higher frequencies than stress-related emotions like fear and anger. If we keep replaying the same thoughts and emotions every day, we're essentially broadcasting the same energy repeatedly. This continuous broadcast sends out the same message from our past, creating a future that mirrors it. Our energy becomes a loop of our past, and the only way to change our lives is to change this energy. In simpler terms, to change our state of being, we need to change how we think and feel. Where you direct your attention is where you're putting your energy. As soon as you direct your attention to familiar feelings, you're essentially looking back. Suppose those feelings are tied to a memory from the past, involving specific people, objects, or places. In that case, you're diverting your attention and energy into the past, pulling yourself out of the present moment. Similarly, if you start thinking about all the usual people you'll meet, tasks to do, and places to go in your daily routine, you're channeling your focus and energy into a foreseeable future. All your energy becomes entwined with these known experiences, creating more of the same. Your body follows the path set by your mind, leading you to the same events and realities. Essentially, your energy is split between the past and the future, leaving very little energy to create new, unknown experiences. While the environment influences our thoughts and feelings, if we remain equal to the environment, we'll likely keep creating more of the same. The idea is that we can change something within ourselves, in our thoughts and feelings, and hardwire this change in our brain, conditioning our body to follow suit. The collaboration between mind and body can maintain this modified state of being with evidence showing up in our external experiences. Rather than seeking predictable outcomes, embrace the quantum model that suggests unpredictable events are the key. The uncertainty, surprises, and unexpected twists are what show our inner changes having an effect. Small synchronicities leading to more significant events create a sense of wonder and appreciation for life. This natural state of being arises from within, without relying on external factors to change our state. By focusing your attention on specific images and being present with repeated thoughts and feelings, your brain and body respond similarly to both inner and outer experiences. 
This underlines the interconnectedness of our mental and physical states. When you're fully concentrated and immersed, your inner imagination transforms into an external experience and your body responds accordingly. This means you can make your brain and body react as if a real experience has taken place, even without physically going through it. What captures your attention and what you repeatedly mentally rehearse not only shapes your biological self, but also influences your future. Consider a fascinating study by Harvard researchers. They divided volunteers unfamiliar with playing the piano into two groups. One physically practiced a simple piano exercise for two hours daily over five days, while the other group imagined doing the same without moving their fingers. Astonishingly, both groups showed a significant increase in new neural circuits and neurological programming in the brain region controlling finger movements. Even those who only thought about the actions had brains that appeared as though the experience had already happened. Here's a thought-provoking example. Volunteers who mentally rehearsed playing the piano without physically doing it could perform the exercise remarkably well after five days. Through daily mental practice, they wired their brain circuits preparing for the experience. The neurological hardware became an automatic software program over time, making it easier for them to execute the task when they actually tried. Similar studies demonstrate the power of the mind in muscle training. In a Cleveland Clinic study, participants imagined flexing their biceps intensely during sessions. Despite not physically using their muscles, their bicep strength increased by 13.5% after 12 weeks of mental training. This gain persisted for three months after the training stopped. These findings underscore the remarkable ability of the mind once it is trained and focused on a specific intention. Recently, a team of researchers, including scientists from the University of Texas at San Antonio, the Cleveland Clinic, and the Kessler Foundation Research Center in West Orange, New Jersey, conducted a study. They asked participants to visualize contracting their elbow flexor muscles instructing them to mentally urge the muscles to flex as strongly as possible. This was coupled with a firm intention for 15-minute sessions, five days a week, over 12 weeks. The participants were divided into three groups. The first group used external or third-person imagery, picturing themselves performing the exercise as if watching a movie. The second group used internal or first-person imagery, imagining their bodies in real time doing the exercise. The third group, the control, did not practice. Interestingly, the group using internal imagery showed a significant 10.8% increase in strength, while the other groups showed no significant change. This emphasizes the power of mentally rehearsing physical activities, impacting strength and performance. In our daily lives, when we wake up and start thinking about our day, our biology, chemistry, and even genetics reflect as if the day has already happened. The experiments mentioned earlier highlight that once we engage in daily activities, our body naturally aligns with our conscious or unconscious intentions. If we've been following the same routines for years, our biology becomes more readily activated making it easier to slip into unconscious habits. To bring about meaningful change, it's essential to go beyond internal shifts and actively apply those changes in real-life situations. For instance, having a positive meditation session is beneficial, but it's crucial to extend that positive state throughout the day, consciously steering away from old, ingrained habits. The key lies in creating a habit of behaving differently, breaking free from the unconscious patterns that dominate the majority of our day. How many times must we forget before we stop forgetting and start remembering? That's what we call change. How often do we have to slip into unconsciousness until we reach a point where we no longer go unconscious and can remain conscious? That marks the moment of change. When you're truly engaged in the process, you step onto the playing field. 
Many people express belief in the possibility of healing and transformation, citing testimonials and evidence. However, a crucial moment arises when they say, I never believed it could happen to me. This is a significant shift, a real step onto the playing field. Those genuinely committed to the transformative journey understand that healing is intertwined with change. It's not about waiting for circumstances to improve before feeling grateful and joyful. It's about fostering gratitude and joy to initiate the healing process. The focus shifts from, I'll be happy when, to I'm happy now, and healing will follow. Consider someone who, after a great meditation session, experiences improved sleep, reduced pain, and increased energy, but sees no change in blood values. Instead of dismissing the practice, they introspectively ask, what is it about me that's hindering complete healing? This question activates the frontal lobe, the seat of consciousness. The critical inquiry shifts to evaluating daily behaviors. How did I navigate my day? Did I stay true to my intentions or did I fall from grace? When you lose consciousness, it's not a failure. It's an opportunity to become conscious again. By continually observing and questioning your unconscious states, you step outside the habitual program. You only operate within the program when you're unconscious. The key is to become so conscious of your unconscious states that you're no longer dominated by them. Learning emerges from mistakes and surprises. The brain learns and evolves through these experiences. Acknowledging and learning from your unconscious moments allows you to break free from routines and habits. It's a dynamic process, a continuous journey of self-awareness and conscious living. Declare to yourself that the next time a challenging situation arises, you won't react in a way that weakens you. Consider whether the person or circumstance is worth jeopardizing your well-being. This is evolution, a challenge demanding a higher level of mindset. Facing difficulties is like the last battle of every war. Your body and mind may resist, urging you to stop and return to familiar comforts. Persevere, step into the unknown, and eventually break free from emotional addictions. Move beyond guilt, suffering, fear, frustration, resentment, or unworthiness to liberate your body from past anchors. As you release stored emotional energy, you're no longer governed by those habits. Beyond fear is courage. Lack transforms into wholeness, and doubt fades into certainty. Surrender anger or hatred, and you discover love and compassion, utilizing the stored energy for a new destiny. Overcoming yourself breaks bonds with the past people, places, and times that tie you to present realities. By liberating trapped creative energy, you build a personal energy field. In meditation, allow ample time to avoid rushing and distractions. Allocate more time than necessary, ensuring a relaxed exploration of the present moment. On certain days, I quickly discover the sweet spot of the present moment, but on others, it takes an hour of effort to bring my mind and body back to the now. When I recognize recurring thoughts linked to familiar feelings and halt myself from dwelling in those emotions, I break the cycle of conditioning my body to the past. Since emotions result from environmental experiences, influencing gene signals, preventing those feelings means I'm not instructing the same genes. This not only impacts my body's health, but also avoids priming it for a future rooted in the past. Overcoming stress-related emotions inhibits the genetic program tied to long-term stress and disease. By properly managing familiar thoughts and emotions, I alter my body's energy at various levels, energetic, neurological, biological, chemical, hormonal, and genetic. This reshapes the predictable future and erases the grip of the familiar past. By avoiding the repetition of old neural networks and focusing on the present, I call energy back to me. This way, the familiar past and the predictable future lose their hold, and I find myself in the sweet spot of the generous present moment. 
With renewed energy, I build a personal energy field around my body. It may take hours to transcend self-imposed limitations, but every breakthrough into the eternal now feels immensely rewarding. Thank you so much for joining me on this exploration of transforming our thoughts and emotions. I appreciate you sticking around until the end of this video. If you found value in what we discussed today, consider subscribing to the channel for more insightful content like this. And if this video resonated with you, you're likely to enjoy the content on both the left and right sides of your screen. Just a click away, there are more engaging videos waiting for you, each offering a unique perspective on personal growth, mindset shifts, and living in the present. Give them a try, and let's continue this transformative journey together.